Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another episode of Destiny Index. In the last episode, we took a look at some of the events in Destiny's history in an attempt to answer exactly what brought about the Cabal invasion. Of course, if you haven't seen that, then I'll link it down below alongside the Index playlist if you want to dive deeper into some of the other aspects of Destiny's lore. However, in today's episode, it's time we go back. With Destiny 2 launching later this year and so many new Guardians joining the ranks thanks to the PC announcement, then I'm sure there's a whole load of you out there that will benefit from a complete story recap. Everything we've been through from the moment we woke up to the events of today, and some other stuff that precedes our rebirth. Basically, here is everything you need to know about Destiny's story so far, in as concise a package as possible. If you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated, and if you have any questions, then don't hesitate to ask. Now, in order to properly tell the story, we have to go back, way before our Guardians were even part of the picture. Sometime during the late 21st century, humanity first noticed the Traveller, this large, strange, spherical object or being that went around terraforming planets like Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, etc. After it landed on Mars, humanity sought to learn more and discover its true intentions, so three representatives were sent to intercept it. After contact was made, the Traveller shared its vast knowledge and technology with humanity, in turn ushering in what was commonly referred to as the Golden Age. This is something you'll likely hear a lot, so if you're new to Destiny, remember this bit. The Golden Age was a prosperous era in history during which human civilization spread far beyond the confines of Earth and expanded throughout the solar system. Colonies were built, corporations grew, huge technological advances were made. In fact, it was during this time that the Exo were created, artificially intelligent war machines that operated like humans. Something else created during the Golden Age was SIVA. To anyone that has played Rise of Iron, you will know where this leads, but SIVA was originally developed in a facility on Mars known as Clovis Bray in an attempt to help the colonization efforts. It's a nanotechnology designed to consume materials and use them to build, well, anything, whatever you programmed it to do. The idea behind this was that if SIVA was then placed on a planet, it would build whole colonies, thus speeding up the colonization process. There were, however, concerns about this technology from some of the scientists, their main one being the fact that SIVA is designed to carry out its directive until it receives a new directive. In other words, it doesn't stop. So if it was instead given a bad directive, something say military focused, for example, then there's no telling what damage it could do. Just as easily as it can create, it also has the potential to destroy. However, despite the concerns, work carried on, SIVA was developed and humanity continued to expand. We'll come back to this a little bit later in the story, but for the time being, now you know where SIVA comes from and how it initially fits in. There was a great deal of other stuff that went on during the Golden Age, maybe at some point I will do a dedicated video on just that, however in order to keep the story moving forward, then know that despite all of humanity's advances, research and newfound abilities, none of this would last forever. Following these years of prosperity, an event known as the Collapse occurred. In truth, not a great deal is known about this event, except for the fact that a force known as the Darkness, a powerful ancient enemy of the Traveller that tracks it throughout the cosmos, finally appeared and sought to destroy it and everything it had helped build. Damaged on the brink of destruction, the Traveller used its final breath to create a safe haven for humanity beneath its final resting place on Earth. This would later become the home to the Lost City. During this time, a powerful AI warmind known as Rasputin, one of the six AI warminds built to protect humanity, anticipated this loss, withdrew all war assets from the field, and fell silent. This obviously left humanity vulnerable and nearly resulted in their extinction. The Earth's forces withdrew, but many of them were wiped out in the asteroid field near Saturn and Jupiter, which resulted in an area we now know as the Reef. Those that survived in this zone were exposed to the darkness and the radiation, which later resulted in the creation of an entirely new race known as the Awoken. Furthermore, the aforementioned Exo, now without a central AI to command them, became fully aware and self-reliant. In the Traveller's dying breath, it also created the Ghosts. These are floating AI companions, capable of resurrecting dead warriors, turning them into what we know today as Guardians. Anecdotally, these resurrected warriors were also known as the Risen, but Guardian is now the commonly used term. These Guardians, or Risen, were able to wield the Traveller's Light to fight back the darkness. This is an important thing to pay attention to, given the events of the Destiny 2 trailer. The majority of our power comes from the Traveller, so were anything to happen to the Traveller, well I'm sure you can put two or two together. Now, most of the Guardians worked alongside humanity to protect and rebuild, but there were those who chose to use their power to gain control. These were known as the Warlords, they took over areas, ruling with an iron fist, instilling fear in those beneath them. 
This is actually about the right time for me to now introduce the Iron Lords, a group of guardians we'll need to know about in order to make sense of the events that transpire a little bit later in the story. Radagast and Perun decided it was about time to put a stop to the Warlords, so they called upon Saladin and Yolda and asked them to aid them in their quest. They agreed and they began recruiting those that they trusted. This force or this army began to grow and would later be known as the Iron Lords. Bit by bit, the Iron Lords started taking control away from the Warlords and this is where Felwinter and Exo came in. Originally a Warlord, he saw the power of the Iron Lords and switched sides. He gave his mountain to the Iron Lords, joined them and worked alongside them to remove any remaining Warlord threats. The Iron Lords grew to roughly 100 members, they built the Iron Temple atop Felwinter Peak and had proven that they were there to protect humanity and not abuse their power. And thus, the Iron Lords paved the way for future Guardians. Shortly after this, the last city was formed beneath the Traveller. This would be humanity's chance to rebuild after all that they lost. The Iron Lords protected the walls of the last city in the infamous Battle of Six Fronts. This was a battle against six fallen approaches. However, the might of the Iron Lords was too strong and not a single front faltered. Nearing the end of the Iron Lords' golden days, they stumbled across the ancient research at Clovis Bray. In particular, Siva. The Iron Lords thought or hoped that they could use the technology to help rebuild civilizations following the events of the Collapse perhaps even bring about a new Golden Age. Siva was locked away on Site 6, so the Iron Lords set out to find it, but in doing so they contacted Rasputin, who had been dormant up until this point. Now bear in mind, Rasputin is an AI designed to protect humanity, so in the eyes of this machine, the Traveller, and any one or thing associated with it, is an unknown. Waking up from its long slumber to find the Iron Lords, guardians with the power of the Traveller, in some top secret areas obviously tripped off some alarm bells. So Rasputin used Siva to defend the bunker from the Iron Lords. Siva spreads quickly, it grows and escapes the vault, and this is where the problem began. The Iron Lords inside the vault struggled against Siva but managed to force it back into the vault and work their way towards the replication chamber. However, during this time, Yolda came to the conclusion that this was a fight they simply couldn't win. She locked Saladin out, created a huge explosion from within, in turn sealing the chamber, damaging the remaining Siva and hopefully putting a stop to the potential danger it presented. As one of the only remaining Iron Lords, Saladin closed the Iron Temple, essentially becoming the sole remaining Iron Lord, aside from Efri, who went to live with a peaceful colony of Risen. Fast forward a few years, and this is now where we come in. The path has been paved for a new generation of Guardians. We're woken up by our ghost and have our first encounter with the Fallen. However, at this point in the story, there are far greater threats to worry about. The Hive have begun expanding their reach beyond the moon and continue to grow in numbers. After a mission to the moon, we learn that the Hive are amassing an army with the intention of invading. Luckily, we show up in time to stop the ritual that the Hive were using to drain the power from the Traveller. We also destroy an important Hive weapon known as the Sword of Crota, and we disrupt communications they had going with their god, an ominous figure whom we'll encounter later. Following this, we cross paths with a mysterious Exo known only as the Stranger. The Stranger tells us that our next target lies on Venus. We must rip the heart out of a place known as the Black Garden so that the Traveller can begin healing. However, in order to access the Black Garden, we first have to pay a visit to the Awoken Queen of the Reef. She sends us on a seemingly pointless quest to kill a Gate Lord and return with its head. Turns out the eye from the Gate Lord is the key to entering the Garden the entrance to which is located on Mars. Upon arriving, it seems the Cabal have also been trying to gain access, but have thus far been unsuccessful. Venturing aside, we find the Vex worshipping the heart, we destroy it and them, and this then allows the Traveller to begin healing. And while that's technically speaking the end of the first chapter, there is the whole Vault of Glass aspect as well. The Vex are a mysterious race that can manipulate time and space, yet still live under the belief that events are predestined. It's not totally clear exactly how this fits in, but either way, we enter the Vault and push back the Vex and stop them messing around with time, that of course also involves going through Atheon, who can also control time. And once that's done, we're good. For a bit. Then come the events of the Dark Below. Eris Morn, a former Guardian and the lone survivor of a failed raid in the High Fortress who spent many years surviving in the depths of the Hellmouth, returns to the tower to inform the Vanguard that Crota is back. Crota being the son of the god that the Hive were communicating with until we put a stop to that. Just another thing to add to the list of why this Hive god is ultimately going to end up hating us. The Hive then begins showing up on Earth in an attempt to take over Rasputin so that they can invade, but luckily we show up in time to put a stop to that. The Hive then attempt to resurrect Crota's soul through another Hocus Pocus style ritual, which we once again put a stop to, so now all that is left is to go face to face with the dude himself. We head down into the depths of the moon to seek out Crota in Destiny's second raid, Crota's End, and we put him down once and for all, thus bringing a close to the saga. Just remember that we killed the son of a Hive God, but I'm sure there will be no repercussions from that whatsoever. 
Now begins the events of the House of Wolves. The Queen of the Reef shows up and calls in that favour that we owe her after she helped us with the Black Garden. A fallen Kel named Skolas, a Kel being a leader of a fallen house, escaped capture, slaughtered a load of Awoken and is now trying to unite all the fallen houses so that they can mount an attack on the lost city. Cut a long story short, we hunt him down, defeat him and throw him in the Prison of Elders where he spends the rest of his days. That saga was actually pretty straightforward, to be honest, so let's not waste any time there and move swiftly on. Now enter the Taken King. The Hive God, whose son we killed, goes by the name of Oryx, and to put it quite simply, he is pissed. We've been a constant thorn in his side, laying waste to countless Hive plans, and to top it all off, again, as mentioned, we killed his son. Eris Morn warns Marasov, the Queen of the Reef, that Oryx is on his way, and she convinces her to mount an attack on his Dreadnought around Saturn. That doesn't go to plan, lots of Awoken die, and the Queen goes missing, assumed dead. Meanwhile, the Vanguard intercept a signal from the Cabal on Phobos. Upon arriving, we find the Cabal being slaughtered by a new enemy, the Taken, Oryx's army. He plans to build this army by enslaving other enemy races, Vex, Fallen, Cabal, and even other Hive. It's at this point that the Vanguard then send the Guardians off to discover the lost powers of their forebearers, in the hope that these new abilities will help us combat the dangers that lie ahead. Enter Nightstalker, Sunbreaker, and Stormcaller. With these new powers in hand, we set out to create a landing zone on the Dreadnought so we can begin our quest to take out Oryx. Now if you saw my Destiny 2 Index video, then you'll know that the Cabal also have their sights set on the Dreadnought for their own reasons. They believe the Hive technology aboard may help them combat us, Guardians, and our ability to resurrect. But the how and the why isn't really important at this stage. For now, all you need to know is that the Cabal are also aboard the Dreadnought. So we're able to steal information from them pertaining to Oryx and discover that there is a portal known as a Rupture that leads directly to Oryx's throne room. In order to enter the Rupture, we have to assume the Ascendant status. Again, the how and the why isn't really relevant, but upon doing this, we're able to enter his throne room in the physical world. Here we battle a version of Oryx known as an Echo, but it's worth noting that if you kill a Hive God in the physical world, they just return to their throne room, and thus marks the reason for the third raid, King's Fall. We work our way through his fortress, thwarting anything that stands in our way. We then kill him on his home turf, which means by Hive logic, he is 100% dead thus concluding the Taken King Saga. Now what that remains are the events of Rise of Iron. Now you already know about Siva from the Golden Age, the Iron Lords following the collapse and their conflict with Siva. As far as they and we were concerned, Siva was sealed away. Well, the story now begins with the House of Devils. This House of Fallen search planets for Golden Age technology. Fallen splices their name to use this technology to advance their houses. And after searching many different locations, they stumbled across Clovis Bray. From here they learned the location of Siva, so they returned to Earth and began digging. They uncovered Siva and began splicing themselves with this new tech. However, in doing so they got a little bit more than they initially bargained for. As I mentioned before, the way Siva works is that it continues its directive until it's given a new one. And before the collapse, its directive was to find materials, build and grow, or consume, enhance and replicate. Since the splicers are part technology, Siva's coding then took over the Fallen with some rather strange results. The Fallen then began to replicate, and the only other directive they had stemmed from when Rasputin got involved back on Site 6, so the other directive is to destroy the Iron Lords. And this is where we come in. The Fallen are attacking the Iron Temple, so we set out to stop them, and Saladin comes in to back us up. In light of current events, it's very clear that Siva is no longer sealed away, and thus we set off to once again put a stop to this. Ultimately, we end up back down in the Replication Chamber, where Yolda first sealed Siva away, and this time we put a stop to it once and for all. Whilst there, we also fight distorted versions of the Iron Lords, likely a byproduct of Siva, trying to improve on the former versions. Either way, with the chamber destroyed, Siva no longer possesses the ability to replicate, so all that remains is for us to pick off the remaining splicers. That is where the fourth and final raid comes in, Wrath of the Machine. This is basically where we go after the heads of the splicers who have turned themselves into machine gods, so by taking them out, we then put an end to the threat. Job done. And that is pretty much everything that happened in Destiny 1. Of course, in light of the most recent Destiny 2 trailer, we know it's now the Cabal's turn to be annoyed at us. But it seems like they've had much longer to plan their attack because they are about to make a much greater impact than any other race has to date. Obviously, we'll have to wait until September to find out exactly what happened between now and the events of the trailer. So for the time being, that is it. I appreciate there's a lot to take in, and there is, of course, a whole load of stuff behind the scenes if you take the time to read the grimoire, so I'll work to explain some of those things in upcoming index videos, but until then, if you're looking for a recap on the Destiny 1 story, then that is pretty much it. 
Hopefully it was helpful and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, then a like would be super appreciated. If any of your friends are getting into Destiny for Destiny 2, then feel free to send them this video so they can get caught up. But for the time being, thank you for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.